because what we want is fatty foods and sugary foods and sedentary lives. It was very useful back in Africa, um, but now those habits, which are products of natural selection shaping our motivational systems, they're killing us. And you go to your doctor and say, doctor, what should I do to be healthy? And your doctor says, exercise a lot and basically eat a lot of foods that don't taste that good. Mm -hmm. And sadly, um, we were designed to pursue the foods that were in short supply in Africa. And now that we can get lots of them, they're really bad for us. Right. Also, if we go back a bit further in history, uh, we, we walked on all fours. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty dramatic change you know, to walk on two legs instead of four. You, I, you'd expect that that would have ramifications. It certainly does. You know, in children especially, but sometimes in adults, our bowels get tangled up with each other and they essentially tie themselves in knots. You'd think that you know, natural selection would have fixed that. And if we look over here at a um, skeleton of a donkey, you can see how the backbone is here in a nice arch, first of all. And you can also see the cavity where the intestines are in there. They hang all of the intestines from a blade of tissue that goes right down the middle so that they don't get tangled up. If you take this donkey and turn it on its hind legs like this, all of a sudden, all of the intestines which were hanging very nicely hanging here. Hanging from the backbone there. Yeah. They're yeah. all of a sudden yes. draping in a big tangled mess like a pile of tangled fishing line. Again, the amazing thing is they don't get tangled up more than they do. Yeah. And of course, the other problem just about everybody has in their life at some time or another is back pain. I mean, it's just, you know, why didn't natural selection fix that one? And again, we can, this is a great example of what you were just saying, Richard, about you know, natural selection can't start fresh and we have legacies from our new way of life standing up. Notice here with the donkey, it has a nice arched curved backbone, just like a bridge, a very nice way of supporting everything. If you look at the chimpanzee here, you see that there's still mostly that bridge with the beginnings of a little spot here where the back turns out. In fully upright humans, you see that the back, you have a nice curve here, and then you have a sudden, sudden sharp bend. And that's so that we can stand upright. A marvelous thing that we can do. I'm not sure why we stand upright. That's, that's a, a good question. A yeah. good question. Um, but I do know that this bend of the backbone is something that causes terrible problems for many people. Uh, that's the evolutionary explanation for back pain. There's the physical explanation, the mechanical explanation, is bones pinching nerves. Um, but that's the mechanical explanation. The questions we want to answer yeah. are, why did natural selection Th That's a very it, good illustration, because doctors would, will always tell you what the problem is. Your, bone, your bones are pinching your nerves. Right. But what you're asking is, well, why is that happening? What's the, what's the historical reason exactly. for that? Th those of us who are trying to advance evolutionary applications in medicine would like to see every medical textbook for every disease have one more paragraph. Instead of just an explanation for how the body works and how it breaks, we want one more paragraph about why natural selection has left it vulnerable to breaking. Yeah. And we've gone into some of the reasons for that already. Yes. And what about cancer? That's a special problem, isn't it? No, oh, it's a terrible problem yeah. because it gets worse and worse as you get older, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it too turns out to be a trade-off, though. We can't regrow all of our tissues. We can regrow some of them, but not all of them. Our skin, if you cut it, it heals. Or your liver, even. If you lose some of it, it'll regrow. Your heart? No. Your brain? No. So why can't we regrow heart and regrow brain? And the reason for that is that in ancestral times, people who injure their heart or their brains had no chance of surviving. So there was no selection benefit from being able to repair those kinds of tissues. But you asked about cancer. Uh, it's so hard to talk about cancer. The cells divide, and there are very fancy mechanisms that natural selection is shaped to keep their division under control. In fact, one can look at the whole process of development in the body as largely one that specializes cells so they divide just the right amount and then stop. And then stop, yeah. One of the mechanisms that keeps cells from dividing out of control looks like it's something called telomeres. Now, on the end of each chromosome, the chromosomes are the little bits of DNA that are all strung together. At the end of each chromosome, there's a bit of DNA hanging off the end. And every single time that the cell divides, a little bit of that DNA gets clipped off. And the next time it divides, a little bit more gets clipped off. And basically, it's just the unraveling of the rope at the end, and there needs to be a little spare at the end. 
but it's also a wonderful safety mechanism because if this line of cells starts dividing out of control, then snip, 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 and then the cell dies. Because once that telomere, that little bit, bit of extra DNA hanging off the end is gone, the cell is going to die. A marvelous safety device. But it has a cost too, doesn't it? Because then as you get older and the cells divide, um, at a certain point you will have used up all of that telomere and you will have cells dying because of that. And in a recent study, it was found that people who had longer telomeres indeed were living longer lives. The next part of the story is to show that they are at a greater risk of cancer. And so here we see in a very dramatic form the trade-offs uh, between advantages and disadvantages. Some people might say, if natural selection is so good, um, how come we do get old and die anyway? Oh my goodness, that's how I got into this business, mm -hmm. Richard. I don't know if we've ever talked about that. Uh, but when I was a sophomore as an undergraduate, I asked myself the question, why didn't natural selection make us live longer? And it should, I was convinced as an undergraduate, because there's a lot of genetic variation in how long you live. And n since we know that different genes can make you live longer, why didn't natural selection increase the frequency of the genes that make you live longer? But instead, you know, most people are dead in their 80s and everybody's basically dead by age 100. I came up with what I thought was a fabulous explanation. I thought that it was very important for the species <laughs> uh, to get rid of some individuals so that the whole species could evolve and adapt to a changing environment. And my professor said, that's brilliant, Nessie. You have a good biology brain. He didn't. He did say this, <laughs> but it was, it was very shortly, actually, George Williams has published his book. I can't help feeling that if you'd gone to Charles Darwin rather than to your professor, he would have said something like this. But it's reproduction that really matters. Individual survival is only a, a means to the end of reproduction. You know, I didn't ever learn that, even in my evolutionary biology course at college. I don't know why. It, people talked as if living healthy lives was what natural selection shaped. But at first it doesn't. It shapes maximizing reproduction. And if that makes you live a shorter lifespan, too bad. That's what happens. So if you reproduce like crazy for, for a short time and then die, you've done better than somebody who, who doesn't reproduce very much and lives a long time. Indeed, indeed. So when I was in medical school, I stuck up my hand and I said, so professor, why do we age? And they said, well, it's because machines break, that's why. And I said, no, why wasn't natural selection better about this? And they said, you don't understand. It's genetic, there are mutations, things break. I said, well, maybe. After I finished medical school, I started hanging out with evolutionary biologists at the University of Michigan, including actually Bill Hamilton and Bobby Lowe and a lot of other great people. And they immediately said, you're a doctor and you don't know George Williams' theory about aging? You're ignorant. I said, no, I've just gotten the best medical education you can get. And they said, no, no, you don't know anything. So I read that paper of his from 1957, and I realized that I'd been completely wrong about aging, even though I was deeply interested in it for 15 years. And then I did a study looking at how strongly aging influences survival and reproduction for humans now. And here's a simple calculation I did. If there weren't any aging, how long would we live? It's very easy to do. You just assume that everybody, you know, th your likelihood of dying goes up as you get older. That's really what aging is. What if your likelihood of death stayed the same throughout your whole life as it is at age 20? About a third of us would live to a thousand years old. That makes it really dramatic. So now we come back to George Williams' explanation. Take a gene, he said, that makes your bones heal more quickly. It changes calcium just a little bit. It would be selected for because you break bones early in life a fair amount and healing them quicker would be a good thing. What if that exact same gene had a different effect that deposited calcium in your coronary arteries. What if that killed everybody by age 120? And he noted, too bad, if it gives a selective advantage early in life when lots of people are alive, that gene is going to become more frequent even though that same gene eventually kills everyone. Once I realized that, I started realizing that I wanted to understand every aspect of the body from an evolutionary viewpoint, trying to figure out why natural selection didn't do it better.